What is going on everybody? Hope you're doing well. Looks like I'm fixing to get soaked out here filming this, so hopefully I won't have to move inside to do the rest of this video. But I wanted to talk a little bit more about tuning arrows and explain something or show you something that I experienced over this past week trying to tune these 340 spined uh, gold tip hunter arrows to my new Spider XL bow. And I was having a lot of frustration trying to tune these arrows. And it was something very simple that I didn't pick up on whenever I was in the process. And of course, like normal, what I was doing was I was, of course, taking the knocks out of my arrows and taking little quarter inch increments off. But they still kept hitting in a weak spine configuration, meaning the knock was going to the left whenever the, tar the arrows were impacting the target. I was thinking, man, I can't keep cutting these arrows down because I'm going to get them to a point where, oh, and here comes the rain. <laughs> Okay, so it started raining outside. I had to come inside to finish out this video. Not that I really wanted to do this down in my basement today, but again, I was trying to tune these 340 spine gold tip hunters to my new Spider XL bow. And I kept getting a knock left or a weak spine indication every time the arrows impacted the target. So my first course of action was to take the knocks out, start trimming down the arrows in quarter inch increments, hoping I could get that to stiffen up just enough uh, to fly straight. But I took enough of this arrow out till I got it down to about 31 and 3 8 inches, and it still was presenting weak. Now, there's a lot of things that go into tuning your arrows, from your spine to your draw weight, brace height, how you anchor and release. All of that's going to factor into your tuning, and all of that needs to be consistent uh, from shot to shot to shot so that you're not kind of going down rabbit holes trying to tune arrows that won't tune. Now, these were giving me fits, and I was about ready to just kind of throw them in the garbage and say, well, they're weak arrows or they're bad arrows. But I got to thinking, you know, that's not really the case. There's something that's really affecting this, and I need to figure out what it is. So let me take a few shots and show you how this, it, these arrows are impacting the target. Now, I'll be using the same arrow uh, just so it's consistent throughout each shot and uh, let you see this, and then we'll go from there. And I'll tell you some things to look out for whenever you go to tune your arrows. Now, one thing too, you want to make sure that you're in the same spot every time you let that arrow go because you don't want to uh, move around and do this little arrow tuning tango, if you will, whenever you're <laughs> trying to tune arrows because you're going to be inconsistent. So I have a spot here on the floor that I place my left foot on so I know I'm consistent from shot to shot. That's the indication of the weak spine I was getting. All right, let's take another shot. Find my placement here. Again, another weak impact. And we'll do one more just for giggles. So that's how the arrows are presenting themselves whenever they impact the target. Very weak, knock left. Okay, so my arrows are always consistent from, no matter what I buy, 500, 400, or 340. I always use a 50 grain insert and I use a 125 fill tip up front. I have switched to two and a half inch feathers, which I like to shoot those, and I'll explain, I'll talk a little bit about that here in just a second. But there's something that's throwing this off, and I could, turn, I could cut and cut and cut this arrow and get it down to about 30 inches long, which is right there at the front of the riser whenever I'm at my full draw length. Now, can I shoot them like that? Yes. Could I put broadheads on them and shoot them like that? No. Is that running into an unsafe situation if I had to go shorter? Absolutely, because here's the thing. Where that arrow is going to be at the front of that riser, your hand is also right there at the front of that riser. So let's say during the shots you slipped off, you could really seriously injure yourself by that arrow going through your hand. So you need a little bit of arrow off the front of the shelf, probably about an inch or maybe three quarters of an inch, whatever you're comfortable with. And that's why I didn't want to keep cutting these down. Okay, so now I'm set up with my bow. I've got the new string on it, the Dacron B55 string. Uh, these are both strings were set at eight and a quarter brace height. That way I get, I'm consistent there. And I think that's where this bow actually shoots the best, about eight and a quarter. Uh, so let's take a few shots with this and you'll see the difference in the way the arrow impacts the target. Now, as you can tell, that is presenting a, a stiff arrow. Again, another stiff spine. And one more just for consistency.
same arrow, same distance, same shot cycle, it makes a huge difference in the way this arrow actually impacts the target. So let me offer just a little bit of clarity on why you're getting two different impacts from the same bow and the same arrow uh, shot with two different strings. With the Dynaflight 97, what's happening is whenever you pull back and store energy in those limbs and then release the shot, the limb energy is transferred to the string and then directly to the knock. And because Dynaflight uh, does not offer any stretch or any give or no shock absorbing abilities, more energy is transferred to that arrow to get it down range faster than say the Daycron B55. Now the Daycron B55, because it does stretch and it does give a lot more, it absorbs some of that energy from the limbs and robs it from the arrow, which is causing the arrow to travel slower down to the target, creating a stiff spine. So that's why these these two different setups are, can have an effect on your tuning, and it's something you really need to take into consideration whenever you're purchasing arrows to tune for your particular draw weight. Now, is that important if you shoot the same setup on every bow you have, either a Daycron or a Dynaflight string? Not really, but if you have different bow configurations or different bow setups, maybe in the same uh, draw weight but different string material on there, that's going to affect the shot cycle or the way the targets or the arrows are impacting the target with each shot that you take. Now, for me, I like the fast flight string, so if I'm going to continue to shoot that, instead of having to cut these arrows down, uh, what I'm probably going to do is try to go with a stiffer spine, maybe a, probably a 300. Maybe I'm going to try that out and see if that works because I want to get my arrows a little bit longer and I want, don't want to have to keep cutting these down. Well, I really wish I could have been outside to do this video so I could have taken some longer shots and show you just at, you know, different dis distances, you know, how much your arrow flight is affected uh, depending on the dynamic spine and your bow setup and all of that. And of course, your tuning process. The more and the more you get into it, the more little things you can figure out, you know, kind of like obsess over, if you will. My goal is just to get the arrow to fly as straight as possible without the fletching. That way I know when I do fletch it that, you know, my arrow is going to fly as best it possibly can. Now, a little bit about fletchings that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Your fletching length is really going to affect your arrow flight, and it can mask a lot of problems whenever it comes to uh, arrows that aren't tuned correctly to your bow. Now, what happens with the fletching is they actually put drag on the arrow, and that drag is being used to correct that arrow flight. A longer fletching is actually going to correct it a lot quicker when you release as opposed to a shorter fletching. Now, I like the two and a half inch feathers. Uh, I've been shooting those for a little bit now, and I've tried the four inch, three inch, and two inch, and I think this is a good happy medium for me. But the thing about this is, this is not going to correct that arrow flight as fast, so I need to really make sure that I'm kind of on point with my tuning process or bear shaft tuning. So again, there's a lot that goes into tuning your arrows. Don't get frustrated with it. Don't be kind of overwhelmed with it. Just, just take time and go through the process and eliminate all of the little details that aren't working whenever you're, uh, whenever you're tuning your arrows. As always, I really appreciate you coming by and hanging out with me for a little while, and I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Uh, and if you do subscribe, hit that notifications bell, and you can come back in and hang out with us whenever we post future content. And we just get on here and shoot and have fun and try to help each other. That's what this channel is about, and that's what this community is about, and that's why I'm so happy to be a part of the archery community here on YouTube. Uh, also, for my subscribers, thank you. I really appreciate you taking the time to think enough of my content to subscribe. I love the comments. Please continue to leave comments. Let me know what you think about this video. Let me know what you do whenever you tune your arrows. Let me know what factors you found have either a positive or a negative effect whenever you're in the process of tuning or setting up your bow or anything like that. So I do appreciate it. I do like all the comments and they are welcome and I try to get back to them as fast as I possibly can. Also, don't forget, I've got my blog site up and launched. I've got a few posts there now and I'm adding content as we go. It's blueskiesarchery.com. Please go in there and check it out and consider subscribing to my blog or just, you know, leave your name and email and I'll get back to you on that as well. So thank you so much for coming by. I appreciate it. It's always my hope that you have a great day, a better day tomorrow and a wonderful week ahead of you. And until next time.